Carflo goes, he's a Roy player who goes Krom for what he considers a couple matchups that Roy does worse in than Krom. Evidently, he considers Villager one of those. And he literally said to me, I asked him, are you going Roy or Krom tonight? He said, Roy, hopefully, unless I run into something weird, Villager definitely counts as something weird. Villager is definitely a weird character. That guy, <laughs> that guy throws a pot as one of his moves. And that's, like, that's all weird. he, that's all he did, man, before exploding, because Carflow <laughs> did not give him room to breathe, showing you that the strengths of Krom are not to be understated. The weaknesses are just as polar, right? This character might be more single dimension than Little Mac. However, those strengths are crazy. Yeah, definitely a very, very strong character. Krom on the stage, but once he's off the stage, that is where Elam's time to pounce is. But I don't know if he will get that opportunity to get an edge guard. The way Carflow is playing right now, he is not allowing a lot of room for Elam to work. But gets the first, yep. his first stock. And you know, I appreciate the proper fire safety there, right? Digging your little fire pit before you light the fireworks, right? Making sure to contain any and all explosions for the folks at home. Unfortunately, Carflow making a little bit like Jason Pierre-Paul and sticking the fingers where they didn't belong, so losing the stock there. Yeah, definitely losing the stock. I always love when people pick up the little, uh, the little wood. Bro, wood is so good. That falls from the tree. I I don't know why, but that's like a, such a cool item to me. <laughs> yeah, because it's RNG. It doesn't come out of it. I know. And it's also not the only item that can come out of a, the tree. There's what an is, apple, too. There's an apple? Yeah, but it's like some zero Is point. it only when it like the items are on? No. Oh, okay. It's just very rare. I've never seen the apple yeah, in my I've seen it like life. once. Press one if you've seen an apple come out of the tree. I swear, I swear, I swear there's an, uh, there's an apple that can fall If you're spreading misinformation, that's so no, funny. No, I swear to God there's a fruit that Dude, falls from the tree. Dude, I need the fact checkers in chat right now. Anyways, uh, fact check on this game. Carflow is up two to one stocks. That's pretty impressive. It is, but what's even more impressive is the way Elam has managed to slow this game down, right? Carflow came out to a boring start, but since that moment, until now, it's really just been the Elam show, right? Not letting Carflow get in, and even now he's struggling to close out the stock then before Elam was finding DI wrong left and right and center. Carflow was getting anything he wanted, still trying to find Jab in a back air. Gonna find it finally there, but still can't close it out. Waffle, he is swinging. Elam literally right there just got the first hit in like 40 seconds. Yep. <laughs> like Carflow was absolutely destroying him. Gets the up tilt, closes out the first game. Comfortable victory for Carflow. One of the things we saw there from Elam is, in theory, one of Villager's best tools against Rushdown, which is you put out Lloyd Rocket and you run inside of Lloyd Rocket. And then when your opponent hits you or tries to, right, they hit the, the missile, it blows up, and you get a combo off of it. Yeah. However, as I'm sure our viewers at home might have noticed, Krom has a sword. A really big one. Not a giant one. It's not it's an eight foot Masamune or anything. I don't know what that means. Sephiroth's sword ah. is an eight foot Masamune. That's a big sword. Yeah. It's an eight foot long Masamune is the type of sword it is. But what it means is that, uh, yeah, no, Carvalho doesn't care. Yeah, Carvalho uh, definitely did not look like he cared about Villager in this matchup. He just kind of like clocked in for his 9-5 and was like, jab, jab, back air, jab, jab. Okay, game's over. <laughs> Which is impressive because Elon's a good player. <laughs> I mean, Elam is a good player, and that's been one of the things, right? We've been talking about it here in winners round two and three so far. We've had some very good players going up against each other early in bracket, but we did not have good DI there from Elam as he just lost his stock once again very early off of one neutral win from Carflow. He has been so good at maximizing these advantage states. And the most impressive thing is he's, play he's not even playing Krom as fast as his Roy. He's yeah. just taking the time to find these hits and utilize the extra consistency on those hitboxes is to just confirm you seven days to Sunday. I feel like after you get blown out in game one, you definitely want to hold on to your first stock as much as possible to at least stifle some sort of momentum. But losing your first stock at 86% is not what you like to see. But I like to see the bounce back from Elam, not letting it go too long without taking his first stock in this game too. And we saw this, the consistency of Krom's sword as opposed to Roy's, right? Being that one strong hit all the way through as opposed to sour and sweet spot, allowing him to beat out out the slingshot pellets. 
it's with his blade not care about a lot of villagers kind of 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 just a passive pressure that they put out out just by pressing their aerials and while he hasn't been able to close it out we're seeing Garflo find amazing ways to minimize the amount of times he gets put in edge guard opportunities and when he does he always sets himself up for a reversal that was also a confident um suicide upbeat there yeah, sh care. saying that i'm gonna bring you down to last stock i am confident in my play that i can beat you in a one stock situation and I mean, the way he's been playing so far, every stock he's had either taken first or had the lead. And even when he hasn't, right, it's been a trade and he's been the one controlling the pace of it. Why would you not be confident in that situation? Exactly. I mean, he, he's shown it so far that he is really, really good at this matchup. A weird matchup since he's using Krom at that, you know, and not the Roy. But uh, yeah, 108% on Elam right now. He is not going to live a lot of Krom back airs. Um, he has definitely got a lot of work to get back into the set. I like the slingshot there, trying to confirm to the Lloyd Rocket, but just a little too slow. Elam finally finding some a way to get Carflow off of him, but he can't stop this Swordsman. He cannot stop this Crown Prince from tr attempting to smother him. He just wants to build a home. But he, he just, doesn't have the right permit. He's, he's just been chopping down trees. Let the man vibe on it's, his own. It's not Alaska, man. You need. You don't get to just improve the land and have it be yours. You got to earn it still. And uh, Carflo does not want to let that one happen. Carflo still has to earn this victory, though, because, you know, even though he has Elam at 148%, he still has to find that killing blow. And Elam has been avoiding that very, very well so far. The F tilt from center stage you is going to do it, to though. You had to say something, Waffle. You had to say something. Hey, you know, I'm sorry for saying things. And the caster curse is real, and that's been four sets for us, right? That has been four. I believe that should be marking the end of our block here at Encore. For now, we'll have a pair of other lovely folks for y'all in just a moment. But until then, I've been Ritual. What's up? Uh, you've been Ritual. And you've been? And you've been Ritual. Who are you? I don't know who I am. And that's, I have been, an identity crisis. And that's been the Waffle Man. And I don't you know guys who that can is. catch us a lot on the mic again later. But until then, see ya. Bye.